and welcome to my channel Think Outside of the Box. Today I had my pre-op appointment and I wanted to quickly talk to you about what happened um, and what was discussed and the prescriptions that I received. Okay, so um, in a nutshell, in the pre-op appointment you fill out all the documentation that you will need for clearance. You write your uh, detailed medical history, uh, the prescriptions, if any, that you take, and then you get a chance to really have a one-to-one -one with your plastic surgeon about um, you, what you would like uh, for outcomes of the surgery, and um, you get a chance to also talk in detail about what is he planning to do um, in your particular case. I say in your particular case because everyone is different and there are different approaches. Um, at least my plastic surgeon actually has four different styles of full tummy tuck that he performs. It all depends on your particular anatomy um, as well as what are the results that you're looking for. Um, afterwards, in my case, we discussed my disability as well in a little bit more detail to verify um, if there are any things that we need to consider on the day of the surgery or after I'm discharged. As I was saying, it, ten it can take from two hours and a half all the way up to four hours. That is still a small amount of time considering other types of surgeries out there. So they there is no need for a catheter to be implanted or inserted. And um, in my case, however, because I am not able to walk, they are concerned about the possibility of the bladder getting descend distended after the, um, the surgery as a result of uh, anesthesia, which can happen. And they are also concerned about me trying to do transfers, even if those transfers will be uh, with assistance, just because they don't want anything to go wrong just right after um, waking up from the surgery. So they decided to do the insertion of a catheter, which will allow me to I be able to do number one um, without needing to move around or anything and that catheter will be placed if not for the whole day um, half a day and and we'll see how it goes. In terms of um, the prescription that I received uh, there is Percocet for the pain there is um, an antibiotic, you're going to have a muscle relaxant, you're going to have uh, medication for the nausea, and in addition to that, my surgeon prescribed Lovenox, which will be a blood thinner, and it will be applied as an injection every day, um, once a day for two weeks, just to prevent any blood clot from going up to my heart or, or brain just because of the limited mobility after the surgery specifically, although I'm always limited in mobility. I decided to purchase the post-op kit and I will show it to you. Okay, so what it brings. Okay, so it brings another uh, garment to uh, to have extra that way when you have your laundry day you can put that the old garment in and then just place the new one um, it brings also gauze it brings surgical tape it also brings which is very important arnica and bromelain i am going to show it to you quickly This is the Arnica, and it's um, pills, basically, and the bromelain. In combination, both of them, um, what they do is help you with less swelling, less bruising, and faster healing, which is awesome. 
you have to start them three days before the surgery and continue them throughout until uh, you run out of them. You finish the bottles. And this is the bromelain. Okay, let me show it to you on the other side. There we go. Okay, now it's right. So these are very important um, if you want a faster recovery and less downtime. And the last thing the post-surgical kit brings, at least for uh, at my doctor's office, is the Skin Medica TNS Recovery Complex. There you go. Okay. So the TNS Recovery Complex is applied, it's a gel, and it's applied on the scar, so the scar will be less visible throughout time. I am familiar with the Skin Medica TNS Recovery Complex because that's the one that I actually used as well uh, to for my breast lift and augmentation surgery. So I'm familiar with that. I finished that one, so therefore, it was a good idea to get the post-op kit for the tummy tuck. That way I have that as well. They are already ready once um, I receive the clearance to start using it. Which it usually takes a week to a week and a half. But I'll keep you up to date with that. So okay, to recap. I'm going to be having the injections for Lovonox because of the disability. Other than that, anybody... Um, Without a disability, we'll use the same medications, which is the painkiller, uh, uh, muscle relaxant to control the nausea, as well as preferably, if your doctor says it's okay in your case, to take the bromelain and the arnica as well throughout. I am going to show you quickly the pictures so I can tell you what I am looking for. Here they are. Okay. So these are the pictures that I showed my uh, surgeon. If you could see, there is a slight difference between the um, full tummy tuck on the um, upper side of the paper and from the lower part of the paper. Both of them have flat um, abs, however, the top has a what I called a sunk in effect and that's actually the one that I am looking for but the doctor was very clear um, about letting me know in the realistic goals. So with this said, um, he said that if I, I want a um, flat tummy but a sunk in effect. It might be a little bit challenging in my case because although um, despite my physical disability, I also have another type of disability which is called um, spastic quadriplegia. I've talked a little bit about that in other videos for how it affected my breast lift and augmentation surgery. But in this case, in the full tummy tuck, the the muscles, when you're relaxed, the muscles need to be soft. And in if, if you're able to achieve that softness when relaxed in relaxed position, then a sunk in effect can take place if anatomically your body does that. However, in my case, because of the spasticity, that means that the muscles are um, contracting all the time and are tensed all the time which is painful, but separate from that, um, it's tense all the time. So therefore it creates like a, a bulgeness in that area, specifically in the abdominal area. And he's going to try as much as possible, bring that inward when he does the muscle repair and when he does the um, liposuction in selective areas but it's something that he said that i should definitely keep in mind 
um, that maybe I won't have the sunked in effect. I will have flatter abs, of course, and a slimmer waistline and an hourglass shape, but maybe not so much as what I'm looking at the picture. And then he said, and and I was appreciative about that. He said, you know, don't even don't. It's not personal. Is that even if you are able-bodied and you are able to walk, you can bring pictures, but because everybody's unique you won't have exactly the same results as what you see in the pictures because that person is not you it's someone else so they have different circumstances so it's something to keep in mind um, I am going to do a video about the things I bought to prepare myself for the surgery day which is going to be in 18 days uh, let's see how it goes. I'll keep you posted. I hope that you are with me in this journey together. It has been very hard finding uh, videos that talk about the full tummy tuck from a perspective of a person with a physical disability. So I am looking forward to having this video available for all of you to see and use as reference. Um, always remember that is super important to think outside of the box. See you soon. Bye.